Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries, and a while back I showed you how to build these two drawer modern style nightstands. And today, I'm finally going to show you how to build a matching bed to complete the whole set. So if you're ready, let's get started. I made my bed and my nightstands out of rough sawn poplar, so the first thing I had to do was mill down all of my lumber to the same thickness and to the approximate size that I was going to use. Because the bed posts were thicker than one by material, which was the only thing available at my hardwood store, um, I had to laminate the boards together just like this. I just glued and clamped them. Um, I've got more details on that in the blog post in the description below, but my post ended up being slightly less than 3 inches by 3 inches. So you could use a 4x4 four four for these posts, but your measurements will be a little bit different than mine. Once the bed posts were all glued together, I just ran them through the planer on the laminated sides to get some nice smooth edges. Once I had my bed posts all milled up and ready to go, I cut them down to the lengths that I needed. I had two tall headboard posts, two short footboard posts, and then two longer posts that went in between the two. You can find exact measurements for all the pieces to make the bed in the plans in the description below. Once the posts were cut, I worked on making the panel that goes in the back of the headboard. I just took three pieces of the poplar lumber that I was using and cut them down to slightly over the width that I needed this panel to be and um, trimmed them down with the miter saw and then I squared off the edges on the table saw just to make for a cleaner glue up. I simply glued and clamped these boards together to make a headboard panel that was a little bit wider than the width that I needed and it was about 23 inches tall. It doesn't really matter if you wanted to make yours taller or shorter, but mine was about 23 inches. If you're using standard one by material that you might get from the big box store or your local lumber yard, you could use three one by eight boards here. Once it was glued up, I made sure everything was pretty flat and then I just wiped off all the excess glue. This will save on sanding later. Once the glue was dry, it was time to remove the clamps and then cut the panel down to size. The width of this panel will need to be the same width that you would cut your long bed post that would run between your two headboard posts. Mine was 62 inches for a queen size bed. I used my circular saw and my Craig AccuCut to cut this down real easy and get a nice square corner. You could assemble this bed many different ways. I chose to use dowels. So I drilled dowel holes across the short sides of my headboard panel so that I could glue it and attach it into the headboard posts. You can see here, I used my Rockler dowel jig to drill 3 8 inch diameter dowels, 3 quarter inch deep into the edges of my headboard. Then I had to drill more dowel holes into the actual bed post to attach them as well. Where I attach the wider bed posts, I use four dowels, just like shown here. I drilled four corresponding dowel holes. The biggest thing here is just to pay attention to the location that you drill your dowel holes so that you make sure that they correspond to the piece that you are attaching. Once I drilled the dowel holes for the posts to attach, I made sure to leave a 4 inch gap between where the bottom of the top post would be and where the headboard panel would start. And then I started drilling corresponding dowel holes to where I had drilled the holes in the side of the headboard panel. Basically here you're going to attach your bed post and your headboard panel all at once in a glue up. So you need to make sure that all your holes line up before you start gluing. I didn't double check mine and one of my holes was off and it was a crazy mess and there was a lot of frustration. But, just double check that your holes line up and then glue in your dowels, just like shown, and attach your headboard posts. And then glue in your headboard panel. Because I kind of had some misalignment issues, this was my first time using dowels, it was a crazy glue up. So I didn't take a full video because there was a lot of frustration and angry um, comments. But this is what I ended up with in the end, gluing up the headboard. You can see here that basically you're just attaching the long bed post and the headboard panel together just to make the whole headboard as one piece. 
After the chaos of using dowels on the headboard, I decided for the footboard just to use pocket hole screws. This made it a little bit quicker and a little bit easier, and because of the mattress, you weren't going to be able to see the pocket hole screws anyway. So I assembled the posts just like the headboard using four dowels on each corner. But for the panel, I just drilled the three quarter inch pocket hole screws into a one by eight or a one by ten board and attached using two and a half inch pocket hole screws. Because the posts were so wide, the two and a half inch screws aren't going to come through the other end and it'll give a little bit more strength as well. So now that the headboard and the footboard were assembled, it was time to work on the bed rails, which is honestly the easiest part of the project. So if everything's gone well so far, it's smooth sailing from here. For the bed rails, I cut um, two 1x10 pieces of poplar to about 80 inches long. Then using my circular saw and my Craig rip cut, I cut a full sheet of plywood down to two six inch wide pieces and then I just cut all the rest of the plywood down to three and a half inch wide pieces. You'll use the three and a half inch wide pieces later for the slats but right now we're going to use the six inch pieces to create the supports for the slats on the bed rails. I just glued and screwed these six inch slats onto the bed rails just like shown. This will be the board that your slats will set on to support your mattress. To make for easy assembly and disassembly of the bed, I just used this really simple hardware to attach um, the bed rails to the head and the footboard. I've used these before on another project and they work really well. You just attach this piece to the bed rails, the piece with like the teeth, I guess, and then you attach the piece with the slots onto the headboard and the footboard. Make sure that you attach them so that they'll all line up at the same height that you want them to be. At this point, I assembled the bed just to test fit and make sure that everything would line up correctly and fit together properly. And then it was time to make the slats. These slats are super simple. You could do this a thousand ways. I just used those pieces of three and a half inch wide plywood that I cut earlier and two by twos and screwed the two by two into the center of each slat and let the slats rest on the plywood piece that we glued to the side of the bed rail. Once you've got your bed in your final location, it's good to screw those slats into those plywood pieces on the side of the bed rails just so the slats don't move. Um, and then just add a mattress, pillows, bedding, whatever, and you've got a bed. And if you're wanting the whole set, don't forget to check out my video on how to build these two drawer modern style nightstands as well. I've got the full plans for this bed in the blog post and the link in the description below. And if you're looking for more inspiration, I hope that you check out all my other videos right here on my channel and subscribe.